Hello there and welcome to the Bournemouth versus Liverpool preview ahead of this weekend. Saturday, 3 o'clock, it is the kickoff, and we are playing away at Bournemouth this weekend. So, we come off the back of an absolutely beautiful, beautiful performance it was against Everton midweek, where we won 5-2. Brilliant counter-attacking football, beautiful attacking football just in general. All right, defensively, could have been better. But in general, you know what? We got, we went out there, we scored the goals we needed to. We gave some guys like Shakiri, Divock Origi, Adam Lallana, gave these guys a chance in the team and they did not disappoint at all. Not in my opinion anyway. So... We come into this Bournemouth game, the likes of Firmino, Salah have had a bit of a rest, even Henderson. Some of these guys did come on, I think Firmino, Henderson came on against, uh, I was going to say Brighton then, against Everton. They came on um, late on, but they've had quite a bit of rest, so they should be nice fit and firing for the weekend if we need to call upon them. And then even then, the likes of Shakiri and Origi have put themselves right into the forefront of the choices that Jurgen Klopp can make for a team at any point now. So it actually should light the fire between a good couple of the players as well. Salah was maybe being a bit too comfortable with the fact that I'm going to get picked every single week. Well, now that's not necessarily going to be the case, especially with the performance that Shakiri put on and the performance that Origi put on as well. They offer you something different, but they give you so much in their performances, just the same as Salah and Firmino do as well. So there could be a selection headache for Jurgen Klopp to make because I can't remember if we have, um, I'm pretty sure we do have a game midweek, don't we? Do we? Do we? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure we do. I'm pretty sure we do. I'm looking at the wrong days here. Yes, we do. Tuesday. Tuesday is the big one. Tuesday is the big game and we'll preview that next, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll preview that. But yeah, there could be a selection headache here, depending on what he wants to do for the Champions League tie. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Bournemouth just a little bit. In the last 10 games that Bournemouth have played, they've only won one. That is, literally, for me, that is a surprising stat. That really is a, actually a surprising stat. Bournemouth are a team that I, I generally enjoy watching. I really do. I enjoy watching Bournemouth as a, as a neutral because I always feel that they play decent football, you know, nice passing moves, quite good attacking moves as well, and defensively are generally quite good. But their last win was against Manchester United. So, like, since then, they I think they've lost to Tottenham and stuff like that as well. You know, I think that was under, uh, Jose, one of Jose Mourinho's first games or something like that anyway. But they've lost to teams, they've drawn to a fair few teams that they maybe probably thought that they shouldn't have. But regardless of any of that, I still anticipate that this is going to be a difficult game because there is no easy game in the Premier League. And I firmly believe that, massively, massively believe that, I really do. Because I always think... It comes a little bit back to like being a fan of fighting, like UFC and stuff like that as well. And a phrase that gets bandied around quite a lot is styles make fights. And I think the same thing can apply here in terms of football. Styles make matches. And sometimes like you'll see, uh, say, a team that's like low down in the league. So you'd say, say take an Everton, for, for instance, right? Everton are now 18th in the league, okay? But they still came to us and they scored two goals. So that it, there's something stylistically that they have brought to us that has caused us a little bit of a problem. Now, we've overcome that problem by beating them and scoring more goals. But styles in, in depth, like look at Manchester United. We played Manchester United when they were in the middle of struggling very, very much. They were, oh my God, I think they couldn't really pick up a win full of no money at that time. And even, re I think at, near that point, they'd been beaten by Crystal Palace. But then we go to Manchester United, they go ahead and we we had to bring it back in like the 86th minute to, you know, to get the draw. It was a difficult game and I anticipate a difficult game against Bournemouth. I, I, I don't know what their most recent lineups have been. They look like they've got a heavy injury list. They really do, actually. Steve Cook, Stanislas, Daniels, Josh King, Sermon, Brooks, Kelly... So they actually look like they've got a fairly heavy one and they will not, I don't think they'll be able to play Harry Wilson because obviously he's on loan to them from us. We're the parent club. I don't believe he'll be able to play against us unless there's a different clause in there. But normally they don't, they don't allow them to play against the parent club because 
why would I want to see Harry Wilson scoring a 30-yard free kick against us? I don't want to see it. And it's just not one of those things. Good luck to you and everything in what you're doing with Bournemouth, mate, but not against us. Thank you. Um, but yes, I, I personally feel that we should be looking to go out here and get a win. De like, I think that's what we should be looking to do at a bare minimum. When I looked at the last four games we've played against Bournemouth, um, there has not been a lowest score, uh, a lower score than a 3-0 for us. In each of the four games, dating back to December 17th, 2017, we've had clean sheets in every single one of them. 4-0 on that day, 3-0 on the 14th of April, 4-0 um, on the 8th of December, 2018, and then 3-0 on the 8th of February, 2019. You know, and right now, Bournemouth have had four losses in a row. So, in my mind, I'm like, yes. There's, there, it's like literal split down the middle in my mind. One side is like, should definitely be a win, and we should be looking for a clean sheet. The other side is like, wouldn't it just be written for Bournemouth to get back in things in this game on a four-game losing streak? They're 14th in the league. You know, they're not that far off the relegation zone, as that whole part of the division isn't that far away from the relegation zone if they draw or lose a game. It's just, it's not that far whatsoever. So, what am I expecting from this game? Well, I do kind of expect a couple of changes, possibly. Maybe not defensively. Maybe defensively, actually. I, I fully expect that we might see Joe Gomez play right back. And you'll see maybe Lovren and Van Dijk, Andy Robertson, maybe Milner at left back, depending on how we're wanting to set up how we're wanting to prepare for the Champions League. But, yeah, I can kind of see something like that happening. Um, like a Milner at left-back, Joe Gomez at right-back, and then have uh, Lovren and Van Dijk with Adrian. Maybe Adrian in goal or Alisson in goal, because obviously Alisson's suspension is over now. It could be either or, and you might want to keep Alisson fresh for the week uh, for the midweek game. I don't know. Um, midfield. What midfield did we field against Everton? I actually can't remember. I think it was like, it wasn't Henderson... It was Lalana, Wijnaldum, and uh, James Milner. So Milner was in, in midfield there. I fully expect to see Henderson come back into this one. Uh, Genie Wijnaldum, um, Henderson, maybe Naby Keita. Maybe Naby Keita. That could be a very good option. And I, if anything, I'd love to see him play against Salzburg as well. I'd, I'd love that. I really would. Now, in terms of the front line, the front line that just played against Everton played exceptionally well. And if they're looking to afford any further rest to, say, a Mohamed Salah to see to make sure that he's definitely over this ankle injury, then Shakiri can amply come in. Definitely. Roberto Firmino has been a little bit off the boil recently, and I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Origi start again. I wouldn't be. I'd, I'd, actually, I'd actually quite like to see that. And then Mane on the left-hand side being the conductor of all things attacking. I'd love to see that happen as well. So basically, the same front three that we had against Everton little bit of a change in midfield with Naby Keita coming in and Henderson with Genie Wijnaldum. And then in the back line, Joe Gomez, Lovren, Van Dijk, Robertson, maybe Adrian or Alisson, whichever one you guys can choose, whoever you would like. Then what can I see in terms of a score prediction? I honestly, and I said it a couple of times, I'd love us to keep a clean sheet. But as Van Dijk says, it's not the priority. He's not going to sleep at night thinking, gah, we can see it again. We haven't been keeping clean sheets. We're not keeping clean sheets. As long as we end up on the winning side, it's generally okay. It's only if goal difference ever came into it is when we could start to question it. But at the moment, we're winning. We're doing well. And I'm fully up for us. If you want to concede, fair play. Just go out there and win 3-1. And that is the scoreline that I'm going to predict is going to be 3-1 to Liverpool against Bournemouth on Saturday at 3 o'clock. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Who do you think we should go for lineup wise and also have a bit, bit of an eye on the Champions League fixture next week as well, which is going to be huge. It's going to be a massive game um, because it basically determines whether we play in the Champions League or the Europa League for the rest of the season. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you've got any, you know, just let me know any thoughts that you might have, team selections, predictions, all that business. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you once again, and I will catch you later.